clear water man so all right not only is it a good time of the year to do a soap test it is also a good time now because i'm waiting for the servian to continue doing its work on my nuts edge and kalinga so let's have a look at how to do a soap test quick all right now there's nothing to it you need some lemon scented dishwashing liquid this one's with real lemon juice a relatively clean bucket not actually full of chlorine preferably you then take the dishwashing liquid and you put in a good dollop somewhere between five and eight tablespoons per roughly 10 liters of water and then you fill this sucker up making sure that that stuff mixes properly ah, all right now that it's nice and full and all foamed up and frothy and well mixed you just dump it in an area oh but let's just talk about that quickly Theoretically speaking, you shouldn't be doing it now in the middle of the day like I am. I'm just doing this to make the video. You should be doing it early evening. So when it's a bit cooler, the sun is on its way down, not full sun, hot day and in the middle of the day like I'm doing right now. So in my circumstance, I'm just going to do it in a bit of a shady section over here because that's probably where some bugs would be hiding out as opposed to in full sun. For most of you, if you have a suspected insect damage area then you go out looking for that at the moment you can just see a bit of discoloration a mile at yard that is because of the herbicide application just a few days ago it's supposed to look like that for a few more days you're going to choose that dead dying looking patch and then you go to the green area that's directly next to it and you pour out this bucket like this over that area one action don't be gentle get it all in one concentrated spot and you just sit and wait to see what pops up. Okay, so there I've got a thrip. Let me show you what a thrip looks like. There's a thrip. They eat your lawn, um, but only if they're in high concentration are they anything to be concerned about. There we go. That, my friends, you see them bending backwards. That is an army worm. There it is there. That is something to be concerned about. Let me show you a clearer image of the army worm. There he's now upside down. And here is a second one. Where are you? There we go. Right by a spider that's popped up. And a third one. Now luckily most of these guys are dying and if I walk away the birds will come and grab them but it does prove that I'm just just about to start out with an army worm issue in the exact same place that I had it a year ago. Something told me I should come and do this video and there it is. So that's a good thing. You do a test, you discover that you have something that can cause you serious damage. Army worms are, well they come out about and they do their damage now this time of the year sort of mid to late summer, early autumn, you will probably see an army worm issue if you're one of the unlucky ones. Now, last year in this exact spot is where I got my issue at the same time, January last year. So it is likely that there'll be an issue now again and probably will be moving forward. Keep in mind, I don't do anything preventative because I've been trying to keep the chemicals off my lawn for the last, well, in this season and I've done very well at doing that this year. So, yeah, I think I'm going to just leave these guys alone and see what happens. <laughs> you shouldn't. If you see army worms, anything more than what I've got going on here, you need to tackle them. Cypermethrin will definitely sort those guys out. But you can go to your local hardware store, any garden center, and you look for something that says lawn caterpillar, or specifically army worm, like Knox worm and these types of things. Off-the-shelf products will sort out these problems. You just got to make sure you do the applications exactly per the instructions, and you should be fine. If you get stuck, you send me an email. Jump onto backyardbushveld.co.za and you can get a hold of me that way. Uh, yeah, let's do a few more tests and see what else pops up. Like a big squirt of this stuff. All right, now theoretically you should do multiple checks. If you come up with something like army worm, you definitely should do more than just one check. I've already done a couple down there. All that came out was earthworms and one or two more thrips. Uh, not enough to be a, a concern. I did another check down in the middle. This one here I did for the sake of recording the vid and discovered the army worms and here I'm just going to do another one right here 
and let's see what happens. So funny enough, I've got less earthworms up here, lots in the middle of the yard, plenty, and lots up there. Let's see what pops up over here. There's two thrips over there. And another army worm over here. Just one so far. Right, there's number two. See that guy busy wiggling around. Okay, and then we've got ourselves a little chafer beetle. Their larvae can be a problem. Even they can be a problem as well, but if I see one, I'm not gonna start panicking about it. The army worm, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. And there you have it. So the soap test is meant to do exactly what it did. It showed us what bugs came out of the ground. So I know that I've got lots of earthworms down there and a couple of thrips, no bad bugs. And a couple more earthworms over there. In fact, lots in the middle of the yard. Strangely enough, in the heat of the day, I still managed to pick up quite a few. But up here, in this little patch where I had the army worm issue in January last year, I again now have, well, not an issue last year, <laughs> but ate like 10 square meters of my yard in a day. This little patch up here, it got chowed very quickly. So they can destroy your yard overnight, so to speak. So just, if you see them, you gotta, you don't take it lightly. I'm not kind of joking around about it because I wanna see what happens with just this little bit up here. If it starts to eat away, then I've got a, a physical example to take pictures and show you guys of how it looks when army worms have charred your section. I now know what pests are here. So I'm gonna leave it alone, but I'm gonna keep my eye on it. And by doing that, I can just sort of monitor if I'm gonna have myself a big issue or not. Either way, I'm not too concerned about it. I think that I'm going to end up scalping after this herbicide's sat here for a few more days. I'm going to try and leave it for that seven day mark, but at that stage, oh, this grass is going to be long. So I think it'll need a scalp. Never mind just the height of cut reset, it's going to need a proper scalp. And anyway, we'll do that when it's time. Okay, if you found this useful, please give me a like. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit the little bell notification so that you're reminded every time I put up a new video. I'm not that popular that the videos just keep being shown to you. You've got to ask YouTube to show them to you. And that's it. Cheers. Like a big squirt of this stuff.